Circuit Court of the 15th Judicial Circuit, Criminal Division, and in Fort Palm Beach County, Florida. Case number 21CL002938 AMB, Division of State of Florida v. Travis Rudolph. Defendant, verdict. We, the jury, find as follows. As to count one, we find the defendant not guilty. As to count two, we find the defendant not guilty. As to count three, we find the defendant not guilty. As to count four, we find the defendant not guilty. So say we all, the seventh day of June, 2023, in West Palm Beach. Thank the court. Thanks everyone that was involved in this, man, because it means a lot for the support with everyone. What do you think of the fact that they came back with the verdict in just, uh, what, three or four hours? Uh, I mean, I just I just felt like it was right. You know what I'm saying? I knew all along, you know what I'm saying, that I, you know, I did what I did, had to do to just protect my me and my brother's life. So. Also, before I interrupt you, I just want to tell you it's been a team effort with Miss Perlite who couldn't be here today. And also, this is Ralph Morrison. He's a private investigator, former law enforcement officer and Marine. And, and Ralph uh, is behind the scenes in many cases. And without him, we couldn't have done this. This has been a momentous day for you. What's next for you in your life, Travis? Uh, what's next? I'm definitely going to celebrate with my family, uh, get back to trying to play football and everything. And just a walking testimony that, you know, without these two guys, Heidi, my team, my foundation, it, it, I, I want to be here today to Travis, stay strong. You're smiling big right now. Now that you're officially acquitted, can you walk us through what the past two years were like knowing that you didn't do anything wrong? Oh, uh, man, it's just a lot of tears were shed, man. O overwhelming tears, you know what I'm saying? Long nights, sleepless nights, everything. So that's what the last two years have been for me. Do you feel like you want to pursue a case against any of these other players that play in what happened two four years ago? Well, I'm not going to let Travis answer that at this point. He's just going to enjoy his freedom now, and uh, we'll look at all options later on. What does this mean for your football career? What are your plans there? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to my agent, and um, God's willing, I'll I'll still be able to play football. So definitely plan on getting back to football. CFL or NFL? Or yeah, in, anyone, just the opportunity. I love the game, so you're not out of your prime yet, huh? No, still I'm just actually re reaching my prime. Were you, were you nervous when we didn't know what was going to happen here? I know you and your family were out in the hallway praying. Can you tell us why that was an important thing for you? Of course. I mean, it's just the, the, the fact of not knowing. You get what I'm saying? Like, is, your life is in 12 jurors' hands. That, that's a scary feeling. So definitely was nervous. And, um, you know, we definitely pray a lot. We have our wavering faith. So that's Tra what the Tra prayer was about. Travis had faith from day one. He never, even the day he was arrested, he told me how innocent he was and how he didn't do anything on purpose. And he's never varied from his story. He's the first client in 35 years who had the exact same version from day one till, till he testified. And he's been totally confident, more than any of us actually, that the truth was going to come out and his belief in God helped him get through this. You have your mom, your, uh, your mom, your brother, so many of your loved ones are out here. Tell us about their support right now. How do you uh, feel? It's a lot of support, man. I love my mom. I'm a mama's boy. I know... She can finally probably sleep more, you know what I'm saying? And then my brother, thank God for my brother, man. He's a hero as well. It's not just me. Mom, how do you feel? You, want, you have a few words, Mom? The only thing I say is thank you, God. Thank you for just making this day happen. And I love you. What would you say to the jury? Anything you want to say to the jury? I really appreciate the jury. They made the right decision, and God bless them all. And I appreciate them for taking out the time to actually listen to the truth come out. What does a not guilty verdict on not one, but all four counts I mean? What kind of message does that send, Mark? Well, you know, life, we're all human. We all make mistakes. I was tough on the lead officer. It's nothing personal. Um, she really did arrest this man without the right information. And we hope it's a learning experience. That's what life's about. And hopefully uh, she gets her uh, cases done differently next time, and she learns some from this, and the sheriff learns from this, because there's many mistakes made. And if those mistakes weren't made and this case was done properly, we may not be here. But we are here. So let's take this as a learning experience, and uh, we have no hard feelings towards anyone, and we wish everyone the best, and everyone lost in this case. No matter what the verdict is, we're all losers as a community. Uh, but we're happy that the truth came out. How has Travis lost in this case? He lost two years of his life. 
two years of playing football, two years of uh, roaming free, two years of hugging his family, two years of having a possible life sentence hanging over his head, uh, having to pay for lawyers, having to suffer uh, sleepless nights and worrying about this case. Uh, he's lost immensely that he'll never get back, but at least he can start his life over. Today he's being reborn. Is there a message you'd like to give to the other families, the other parties that are involved? Well, everyone should be responsible for their own actions. Right or wrong, we should all be responsible for what we do. And the jury spoke loud and clear that these men are responsible for the death of their friend. And maybe the state attorney's office will look a little differently next time, or even now at this case, as to who the real perpetrators were. Um, but we can't and change that. To the John John family. Well, we're sorry for their loss, obviously. It's sad that anyone died, but responsibility is the most important thing. And that's why I've been doing this on both sides for so long as a prosecutor and as a defense lawyer, because I believe in responsibility and the truth. And the truth came out today. This, this verdict was unanimous, right? They had you all 12 agree on the same thing? All agree. Yes, sir. You yep. could, could he have faced multiple life sentences or one life sentence? Oh, well, he was facing by every... The first degree murder was life in prison without parole. The attempted murders were a minimum of 25 years to life. So he would have died in prison. Uh, the opposite verdict, you would not ever see this man again, a free man. This verdict, he's now a free man. So you could have potentially gotten four life sentences. Basically, yes, sir. Okay? Hey, thank you very thank much. You. You. Have a good thank you. What is this like for your family waiting now on a verdict? Um, it's emotional. It's stressful. It's devastating just not knowing what the outcome would be. Um, but we have faith. Uh, we believe in God. We pray. And we're putting in his hands. It's just right now, the waiting period, just tiresome. I've been crying all morning, all night. Um, crying today, crying here. I'm scared. I'm nervous. Um, but it's a waiting, waiting period now. But God got us. What is up, YouTube? is coffee back at it and y'all hear the breaking news there man travis rudolph not guilty on all counts you know what i cannot understand for the life of me the jury was back there deliberating together right so the foreman or whoever reads the verdict isn't that one of the members of the jury or am i bugging if it is like why the long pause in between each not guilty when they already knew what it was you know like carry on with it you know what i'm saying and it wasn't until that fourth not guilty was read that he could really just take it all in. And, you know, he had his life back. You heard him. This guy almost lost his life. And it's it's good that justice prevailed. You know what I mean? We did a video on this channel where we went over this case. And that, that witness, that ex-girl was just a terrible witness to get on the stand. She lied to this guy about being married. She was abusive towards him. She stirred the pot. She sent motherfuckers over there. She lied and gassed up what really happened. You know, she said right on the stand that he did not put hands on her at all. And she sent individuals over there to shoot his ish up. And if you guys caught that, what the uh, attorney was saying there, you know, he said, hey, we're, we're like, we're so happy with this verdict and, and God is good. Life is good. This man has his life back. You know, he can breathe easy once again and everything. But in the beginning, you know, the attorney said that he really feels that Travis should have never been arrested, that the information just didn't really add up, that this was a clear cut case of self-defense off Jump Street. And uh, you heard what he said. He said, you know, now we take this all in and we move on. But at some point, you know, is the uh, authorities going to possibly charge those individuals because you know that's the way it goes they committed a crime to go carry out what they did and through their stupidity recklessness their loved one their family died you know so they can be held accountable for that homicide i've seen it on an episode of first 48 before you know where there was this guy that had a record he had did a lot of time, but uh, he had more or less been on the straight and narrow since he had been out, but he still kept the heat with him. Um, and I think it might have been a state where you're allowed to keep a heater on you somewhere down south. But of course, him being a convicted felon, he couldn't. And, you know, the basically what happened is the police had a, uh, a guy dead in an alley. 
uh, I don't know if it's one guy or two guys dead in the alley. And they had the footage from this guy in a barber shop where dude sat in the chair to get his hair cut. And these individuals hemmed him up, snatched him up and dragged him out to the back. And, um, you know, he shot first and killed them first as they drew weapons. And the whole time the police were investigating this thing, they just kept saying, you know what? I really feel like this is self-defense. This is self-defense. So when they tracked down the guy, you know, that protected himself and had to kill someone to do that, just like Travis Rudolph did in this situation, you know what I'm saying? They said, uh, hey, uh, listen, don't fluck with us. Be straight with us. And it, before he could even get to saying, you know, if this is self-defense, you got to be honest. He right away said, listen, man, I'm not going to lie to you. This is self-defense. Like the guy knew as well. He said, they snatched me up and pulled me back in the cut and pulled the burners out on me. And I shot first, you know, because I know if I didn't, I would be dead. So long story short, that guy still had to go back to prison. Ain't that a bitch? Even though he was protecting himself because he was a convicted felon, the pistol charge. I think he only had to go do a couple years or whatever. But the other guys were cooperating with law enforcement and, uh, you know, the guys from the other side were cooperating with law enforcement and were giving different statements and more or less telling the truth, but trying to clean up their side of things like they didn't really do nothing wrong. And when it was all said and done, um, everything that they said was used against them as they told the story, you know, and they went to prison, you know, being held accountable for their man that they were with murder because, they committed a crime and and snatched that guy out of the chair and put him in the situation where he had to kill justified to to protect himself and they went down so in this situation i mean that's got to happen right yeah I, I i i would think it would happen sooner rather than later as you see uh law enforcement was really big on trying to put Travis away for this. They wanted justice. They had to lock someone up. And now that he's a free man, um, you know, the, these guys got to an answer for it, I believe. Right. Isn't that crazy, too, that the police would lock him up and say, no, no, we think you're guilty. But then now, since he beat the case, they'll go lock the other guys up. It's kind of like an asinine logic uh, process if you really you know, add it all up. Like, oh, we thought you should go away forever. Well, now we think you should go down for a murder. Go figure, man. You know, uh, the system ain't perfect. But man, oh man, good for Travis Rudolph. Again, that case uh, was fluckery, man. I, I had no doubt in my mind that he acted in self-defense. We saw the messages. We heard that bullish that girl was saying on the stand. But I worried a little bit um, when I, I don't know if y'all call my original video that I did on this, I had a little bit of worry that they said he chased, like he didn't just shoot him. I think he shot like 39 times or something like that, but he didn't just shoot. He shot and then ran at the car as they were going away. And I was worried that the court may in some way look at that like, oh, you know, that's extra animosity. You don't got to bring. They were already retreating, but nonetheless, justice is served. Um, you know, the, the, the jury unanimously said Travis is a, is innocent. He's a free man and gave him his life back. So uh, shout out to the jury as well. And as far as for Travis, man, you heard him. He wants to get big at, back big. What the hell am I talking about? He wants to get back at trying to pursue football. So, you know, uh, will that happen? Will this be the ultimate happy ending for him he already got this amazing happy ending you know but could he continue on and and kick it up another notch and, and make it back uh pro you heard him he said hey cfl nfl what do they got now the xfl usfl he's got options so good for him innocent on all charges you've seen his mom out there breaking down uh or his uh i believe that was a mother in the hallway or was that and Ann, or I'm not sure, but you've seen him. That that was dope. He said, hey, I love you, mom. I'm a mama's boy. That was cool, man. Can never be too cool to love your mama. So uh, that's, that's it. That's what it is. Jump in the comments. Let's talk about it. Thanks for watching, guys. 
Uh, let me know your thoughts across the board. It's coffee, talking music, news, sports, and more. I'll catch y'all on the next one, guys. Peace.